Aloha everybody, it's uh, Jeff Cobb, also known as Mr. Athletic Jeff Cobb, also known as that monster on that one Lucha show. Uh, you are watching Ambi. Hey everyone, it's Alicia from Ambi and I would like to welcome you to our interview with Mr. Athletic Jeff Cobb. Hello. Hello there, thank How you for having you? me. Oh, wonderful. Thank you for having me. Of course. In beautiful Toronto. It definitely is a beautiful day here. It is. We're at Smash Wrestling, the debut at the Phoenix. I like that. It's like, it's glorious here, isn't it? Yeah, you just can't <laughs> do a, you can't pan away from me because you don't want to take away from this, but <laughs> trust me, it's beautiful. Tonight you're in a match against Brent Banks, Mike Elgin, and Tarek. How are right. you feeling going into this? I'm uh, pretty confident. First time in uh, Toronto, so I definitely want to leave a good impression with the uh, the fans of Toronto and the fans of Smash Wrestling, so I would definitely be bringing my A-game, A-plus-plus A-game. So. You were just at WrestleCon, and you were raving about how amazing the experience was, so tell me a little bit about it. It was wonderful. Um, I know I say um a lot, but I apologize. But it was very wonderful just for the fact that uh, the hotel that I was in was where all the WrestleCon shows were in, where I was, all my shows were except for one. And it was wonderful because I could just finish my match, run back to my room, shower, come back down all nice and spiffy and smelling good and selling some merch. Not from not buying from a sweaty guy, but a nicely <laughs> smelled guy. So it was wonderful. I enjoyed it. It was it was a fantastic time. I, it's hard to put it into words, but it was it was great. You mentioned two names on the flight back: Cody Rhodes and the Honky Tonk Man. So oh yeah. What no, went there down? was also um there was also Ken Shamrock. Okay. It was weird because um I I've. I've been pretty cool with Cody for a while now just because of what we, uh, me and Matt Rota did at BOLA, or Matt Rota and I did at BOLA. Sorry, my English is bad. Not an English major. But it was great. Uh, so since then, like, uh, Cody's been pretty cool. And I just ran, like, we ran, randomly ran into him at a, on our flight home, uh, myself and Timothy Thatcher, as we're, we live in Sacramento. And uh, I was like, hey, it's Cody. Yeah, it's, it's Cody's wife. Cool. Is that the honky tonk man? What the hell is he doing on this flight? And then lo and behold, like, I sit down. I am sitting in the higher classes because I put my my frequent flyer miles number in, so I got a little bumped up. Timothy Thatcher, you need to get on that. Uh, but I moved up, and I was looking as I saw Honky Talk Man. He was in first class. I should be in first class. But, uh, yeah, he was there, and then some guy was talking, and I was like, hey, I know that guy. That's, that's Ken Shamrock. So it was a really fun, star-studded, star-studded flight and me, and <laughs> it was great, man. It was great. You shared before how you're such a big fan of old school wrestling. Like um, I like the older, older, like um, like Jake Roberts, uh, Ted DiBiase, Kurt Henning, uh, not Kurt Henning, I'm sorry, Kurt Henning or Mr. Perfect, uh, you want to call him. Um, th those are my guys. Like, as a kid, I mean, obviously I like the Hulk Hogan and Ultimate Warriors. Your alarm is set. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so Hulk Hogan, Ultimate Warrior definitely drew me in because I was a, I was a youngin when they were, when Hogan was running wild and eating pray eating vitamins, saying prayers, and that was my thing because it was so cool. And then as an as an adult, uh, when I started wrestling, I enjoyed the the better workers and the better storytellers. So like Jake Jake Roberts and all that. Um, when I started wrestling, Taz and Kurt Angle starting to come around. So like their styles influenced me, but I was a fan of the older generation. Who would you love to go toe to toe with in the ring that <clears> you've got to? Uh, still definitely Kurt Angle. Um, unfortunately, we tried to make it happen a few times, and just the schedule didn't really work out. And then found out it's like, yeah, I'm not taking any bookings after March. <laughs> I wonder why. But no, I mean, I'm more power to him. I'm I was so happy that he got into the uh, the Hall of Fame this year, and now he's the Raw General Manager. Yes. So you know, more power to him. I'm you know, but if he does come back to the Indies and decide to have one more match, this guy. Please be me. But yeah, definitely Kurt Angle. I mean, he's, I mean, he's amazing. Like he heavily influenced me when I was uh, training for the Olympics, and then in the Olympics, and then amateur wrestling and pro wrestling. So, definitely Kurt Angle. Did you like his sexy Kurt Hall of Fame <laughs> little dance that he did? You know, it's funny. I haven't watched the Hall of Fame yet, but I did see that little clip. Yeah, it's going around online. Everywhere. It was wonderful. <laughs> Kurt, stop wrestling. Just start singing. It's oh, <laughs> wonderful. You were just in Mexico, but you didn't post. That, you know, too much information about what was going on there. So what were you up to? I was there for uh, Conan's company, The Crash. Okay. Uh, they're making great waves. Uh, the main event was Rey Mysterio, Phoenix, and Pentagon Jr. Uh, taking on Cody Rhodes, Sammy Callahan. And I forget the third, but he's from Noah, uh, Pro Wrestling Noah. I, I'm, I apologize out there. Um But, yeah, so it was, it was great. Like, The Crash is wonderful. It's a great company that 
Uh, normally runs in Tijuana, but now they're expanding out to Mexico City, and they had a great buzz while we were there, and, and they treated us very well. And it was re really random on a Wednesday, or a, a Wednesday show, but you know they drew a great house. The crowd was heavily into it. I was on the heel team because I beat up Blue Demon. <laughs> yeah. I saw a photograph, and you were holding a ukulele. Do you play? Oh, um, you know what? I okay. Contrary to popular <laughs> beliefs, not every Islander plays the ukulele. You were just holding it. Only reason I'm asking. But, but. Uh, the last time I was in Hawaii, uh, last, or I'm sorry, last summer I was in Hawaii, I was staying at my uncle's house, or my uncle and aunt's house, and they were teaching me how to play. They gave me an ukulele as a gift, and I have been practicing, but my schedule got really busy, so I haven't been as, uh, as stern as I should be on my, on my practicing skills, so it kind of went away. And then it just happened at WrestleCon, Jervis Cotton Belly put an ukulele around my, around my neck, and dag nab it, he put me on the spot, and I fumbled it. I was, <laughs> I, I apologize to all my Hawaii family and friends. Uh, I will get better at that, promise. Do you play any other instrument? Uh, I play the banging of the bongos when, when I'm hitting people. But other than that, no, I do not. I don't have any musical, I have no musical nothing. I can sing horribly. That's about it. That's it? Yeah, I'm not singing for you, by the way. <laughs> I know, Sorry. I was going to ask, and I'm like, I don't think he's going to do Sorry. it. Sorry. <laughs> Who are some people you like singing horribly to, or some bands you're digging? Okay, I am going to go ahead and throw this out there, because I shouldn't be ashamed. Uh, Temptations is one of them, and the other one is either Backstreet Boys or NSYNC, depending on what they are, depending okay. on my mood. But majority is Backstreet Boys. Majority. Yeah. From the first two albums. Anything after that, anything after like Black and Blue and uh, I think it was like a Never, like Never Something was their, one of their more recent albums. I was like, eh, it's not that, not that good, not as good as, as before. But definitely the first one and the second one, like, um, yeah. I mean, not Larger Than Life, that was it. Yeah. Is that who you listen to when you're kind of getting pumped for a match or when you're training? You know, honestly, uh, I listen to On My Pandora. I mean, if I can go run and grab my phone, but on my Pandora, I have um, Island Music, uh, Backstreet Boys is one of them, uh, ACDC is another station. Uh, for me personally, I think if you're going to work out, you need to be in a good, relaxed state of mind. And like those, those like it's whatever makes you comfortable. So, yeah, don't, don't judge me out there, world. <laughs> but it's whatever, it's whatever makes you comfortable is what's going to make you have a good lift. So, yeah. There you have it. Don't judge people. Let's wrap everything up. Is there anything you want to leave with all of your fans who will be viewing? Just any parting words? Um, well, thank you all for the support. Um, continue to support by stopping by the merch table. And if you ever want to see me on a show that I'm not on, definitely tag the promoter in them. Use a hashtag <laughs> book that brown guy. <laughs> and yeah, let's get the ball rolling. Thank you so much for joining me today. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. It is my pleasure. And remember to everybody viewing, you can visit us at musicblogger.com for all exclusive interviews, features, videos, and so much more. See you next time. Aloha, eh? <laughs>